So wherever you are right now, take a moment, whether you be standing or sitting, and I invite you to close your eyes and simply focus on the sound of my voice. You can bring awareness again to the, what you sense through touch, the feeling of the feet into the ground and your seat in the chair. You can notice what you smell. For now, your eyes are closed. Maybe you just notice a very simple, plain, kind of color that you might not need to identify under the eyelids. Perhaps you are in a very quiet space and all you hear is my voice. Perhaps you're in a slightly noisier space and you hear sounds from the street or sounds of people around you. And can you just notice those sounds but let them pass through your awareness? You do not need to hang on to them. This is the second episode of our podcast and it's called Music and the Body and I am thrilled to have Sarah build our guest today, a contemporary dancer, a choreographer. She's a teacher at École de Danse Contemporaine de Montréal and she's also an educational advisor at the Faculty of Music of the University of Montréal, which is where I I'm currently doing my, my doctorate and that's actually how uh, I discovered Sarah. It's really impressive how dependent, how much we rely on our bodies to do what we do and yet we don't have that important conversation about how to be more present, how to be more aware of our body, how to prepare our body for a performance. So I'm very, very happy that you're here for today's episode of the Music Doc podcast, Sarah. Thank you very, very much. And the first question I'd like to ask you, I think it's a good first question so you can share a little bit with us about your background. Uh, you're a dancer, you're a choreographer. So I would like to know from your point of view of someone who works both in dance but also with musicians, what do you think is the most important lessons musicians can learn from dance? Thank you, Amanda. First of all, I just really would like to thank you for the invitation to be here. And it's a subject that I think is fascinating. And I'm, I feel so lucky that I get to work on this with musicians in, a, in an ongoing way. Um, it's a great first question. And I would say that the biggest one that I find is that I encounter with the students that I meet is the idea of balancing their musicality and their all their knowledge of musicality with physical awareness. I think it's easy to forget that as musicians, we are in a performance practice and we perform with our entire body and our entire presence. And that your body is involved in playing the instrument, but it's also involved in your interpretation of the music that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, awareness, physical awareness will only bring more uh, detail and richness to your musical interpretation. Absolutely. I love this answer, this word that you use, awareness, which for me, I recently shared a post on my Instagram account uh, sharing this little epiphany that I had recently that the purpose of practice for me is to become aware, is to increase my awareness, both musically, the sound, but most of all physically. And I'm a strong believer that in order to be a true artist, we need to be more than musicians. And that's why I'm always interested and fascinated with other fields such as painting, but also theater and especially dance. I think we have a lot to learn from, from dance and all of these other fields because they can tell us and enrich both our practice and understanding of music so much. Uh, oh, there's a little cat. Hello. <laughs> you also talk about musicians psychological side and I think this is one of our biggest challenges both in practice but especially during a performance and I realize most of the time and most of us struggle with this psychological part and we get in our own way when it comes to performing for an audience. And I recently received an amazing question from one of the followers from the Instagram account. Sometimes we struggle with physical tension when we're playing something that is really difficult. But he was wondering if there is also a psychological side of this. If when we think something is difficult, 
then we tend to struggle with physical tension and block our muscles and, and body. Do you think that there is also a huge like psychological effect on that physical tension? And if so, do you have any techniques that you use with your students to uh, fix this problem or at least control this a little bit? So I think you're raising a lot of interesting issues here. I think um, I'm a firm believer that we are an entire organism. I don't believe in the duality of mind and body. I think we are a body-mind. We are an entire system. Our mind uh, informs the body, but our body informs the mind as well. And as a dancer, I've worked my entire life to kind of unify these aspects of myself. Mm -hmm. And I would say that musicians have to think of themselves as physical. It's a physical art form. They are in a physical art form. And we tend to think of music as maybe more intellectual or, or abstract. And so it's kind of up here in the ether. But there's the reality that you need to um, uh, train your body and your hands and your muscles and your in all these different ways to perform the music digitally, you know, through the digits rather and through uh, even holding. I mean, some some instruments are very heavy. Some are lighter. Some are many instruments actually ask for asymmetrical positions. <laughs> you know, this demands a certain kind of muscle tension and control. And it would be, I think, it absolutely necessary to remember the body in all of this training. Now, you you raise the psychological aspect, and yes, again, if we think of ourselves as a body mind, our emotional, our psychological impact or experience will impact our physical experience. And especially in times of stress or anxiety or in times of having to work towards a show or having to perform and feel that we are going to be judged or, you know, all of this is going to become more acute and all of our problems are going to appear more acute and, and kind of come to the surface. And the best thing we can do for this, you know, you mentioned fixing. I don't think there's any fixing possible. What I like to think about is more like practice. And it's not something you're going to be able to fix in a day or get kind of hit the right note or the right uh, button and be able to be the right self on that day. You need to to prepare in advance. And this comes from an, from an ongoing practice. And I don't want to scare people away and thinking, oh, this is a whole lifetime thing. You can start today in in just deciding to start on a physical journey of physical awareness. And this can take different forms, such as breathing, such as just noticing what are your body parts doing in this moment? You know, what are your sensations? What are you, what are you aware of touching in this moment? What are you aware of smelling or seeing or hearing? And just to awaken the, sen the senses and to keep that awareness ongoing in your life. I mean, it makes life richer, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. And um, these are the kinds of things I suggest to some of my students. I mean, this notion of uh, being present in the present moment is being aware of what are we aware of? What do we notice in this moment? And we can notice things in our mind. We can have thoughts. We can have nagging thoughts. We can have ideas of, oh, all the things I'm not doing. And then we can also just attract our attention to what we really are doing. Where are we right now? I can, for example, bring real attention to how I am speaking right now, how I am hearing the words that I say, how am I using my hands to gesture? I know I'm sitting in a chair, I feel my feet on the floor. I mean, all, all of these things are things you can bring awareness to. And it can start very simply like that and then slowly build. And you know, some of these things are considered meditation practices and meditation uses breathing to bring us back to something very, very basic, which is the breath, which is something we are doing all the time. And um, I would say that a breathing practice would be a very good place to start. Yeah, th what you're sharing right now is a breakthrough that I had when I read a book called The Inner Game of Tennis that I've already mentioned several times uh, in my music talk account on Instagram. There was an amazing idea in that book. We're always focused on something, which is something that we don't really realize, especially when we're under stress. We we tend to say, oh, I just, I don't have any focus. I can't focus. I lost focus. But it's not something that you can switch on and off. You're always focusing on something, but what you have to practice, as you just mentioned, we can't really fix, but practice is turning our focus towards what's really 
important, not the audience and our fear of being judged by the audience or our own negative thoughts when we're practicing and self-sabotage, but what really matters, the music, the sound, or even our bodies. And I think this was actually my sec my third or second question, I don't remember, that I wanted to ask you is, are there practical exercises, practical and simple ways that we can increase this body awareness while we practice? Because I think it's very different from when we are performing for an audience and during our practice. And I think the really important word is practice that you've mentioned before. People think that it's just, oh, I'm going to focus on the music on stage with everyone looking at me, but they don't practice that in their daily practice. So are there any practical exercises that you could share with us so that musicians can assimilate this and enhance this body awareness in their daily practice? I would be really happy. I think it'd be nice to do this at the beginning of our talk to bring everyone into awareness and we could do a very simple um, breathing exercise together. This is something that I invite people to do before they sit down to their practice of their instrument. And it's a very simple one. Let me talk you through it. So wherever you are right now, take a moment, whether you be standing or sitting, and I invite you to close your eyes and simply focus on the sound of my voice. Can you allow yourself in this moment to just land right here, right now. Let go of whatever you've been doing previously, the earlier part of your day. And can you be here right now? And a good way to bring attention to where you are is to feel the floor beneath your feet. If you're sitting, to feel the seat underneath your thighs and buttocks. And if you're standing, just to continue feeling the floor coming up to hold your feet and your feet sinking into the floor. And then how your body is organizing itself above those feet and ankles and knees and hips and the length of your spine and your shoulders wide above your rib cage and the head floating high above the spine. And just really staying with what you know to be true in this moment, which is what you can actually sense. You can bring awareness again to the, what you sense through touch, the feeling of the feet into the ground and your seat in the chair. You can notice what you smell. For now, your eyes are closed. Maybe you just notice a very simple, plain, kind of color that you might not need to identify under the eyelids. Perhaps you are in a very quiet space and all you hear is my voice. Perhaps you're in a slightly noisier space and you hear sounds from the street or sounds of people around you. And can you just notice those sounds but let them pass through your awareness? You do not need to hang on to them. And then right inside the simple awareness of ourselves right here, right now, I will invite you to start adding a little count to your inhale. And I'm just going to invite, you can try to measure your, your inhale to my count if you wish. Inhaling on one, two, three, four, exhaling on one, two, three, four, and then holding a little moment of emptiness at the end of your exhale before inhaling again on one, two, three, four, exhaling on one, two, three, four, staying with a little bit of emptiness, inhaling on one, Two, three, four, exhaling one, two, three, four. 
And you can adjust your own inhale and exhale on your own count. Just making sure that you leave that little moment of pause at the end of the exhale. And you will notice that then on your next inhale, the, the air will just rush in. Your lungs will want to fill. There's no forcing it. So let's just do a few more breaths like this, equaling the inhale with the exhale. If you want to count with me, we can inhale on one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four. Staying with the emptiness. Inhale, one, two. And as you continue to count and breathe, can you then also bring awareness to what you notice? Again, the feet in the floor, the seat in the chair, the direction of your shoulders and the floating of your head. And let go of the control of your breath. Just notice if you feel any differently now than you did at the beginning of this short exercise. Feel a little sense of relaxation. A little sense of calm. And when you're ready, you can blink your eyes open. Come back into awareness of the space around you. So I offer this as a practice. It doesn't need to take long. You could do this for three to five minutes for your instrument. And what will this, this will offer you is first of all, a coming into awareness of your breath, which is something just really at the core of our existence. And then it will be something that will be more familiar to you in those times of difficulty or stress or acute, you know, difficult practice or moments on stage because then you will have a recall and a memory of associating awareness with breath with a certain sense of calm. This is why it has to be something to practice. We can't just decide all of a sudden to conjure up, oh, breathe and be calm if you don't have an awareness of that beforehand. And it's the same thing any musician will tell you. You can't just all of a sudden start playing scales with dexterity unless you've done the practice for years ahead of before beforehand so really if there's anything any message i come to you with today it's really this notion of um inviting practice into your life and a, inviting awareness into your life and it does not need to be complicated breathing is something that we take for granted because we do it all day long and we don't really have to think about it but when you when you're in a stressful situation just as you said right now you can simply remember to stay calm and focus on your breathing because just like music this is something that we need to practice, right? And I also found it really interesting during this guided exercise, almost a guided meditation actually, that you mentioned that when we inhale, we don't have to make any effort because our lungs are going to fill in naturally. This idea of effortless working with our bodies is something that we also try to look for when we are practicing our instrument. I had I had several teachers uh, in my career that were teaching me to work with my body, with my muscles, to make things easy and more natural. And the same thing goes with with breath and i really loved it i don't know if any of you joined us in this guided exercise and i'm definitely going to take two minutes before my practice from now on to just try this simple exercise and with practice it becomes so much more natural while we play to remember our body, remember to, to breathe. I, I was sharing a story with uh, my, my, my followers yesterday. And whenever I played something that was difficult, I would stop breathing. And I realized many of my followers were also struggling with the same problem. We completely forget to breathe when we are focused on a technically challenging passage, which makes us feel even more tense and which makes it even more difficult to, to, to play. And when my teacher asked me to play and focus on my on my breathing, I, 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 I couldn't function anymore. So 
Do you know what's very interesting about this? Recently, in a class I took, a teacher shared with me that if she's found it easier now, not to, or better, not to ask people, "Hey, make sure you're breathing," or "Remember to breathe." Rather, the question to ask is, "How are you breathing?"、Mm -hmm. We are breathing. We hope we're breathing. I mean, we we need to be breathing. But to kind of right away bring attention to how am I breathing, rather than, "Oh yeah, <laughs> start breathing." Right, because that just kind of adds to. Oh my God, there's something I should be doing. But just bring awareness. How am I breathing? Am I holding? Am I forcing? Am I just? What is the nature of the breathing? Again, it's more of an inquiry, yes, than a command. I think it's something interesting to remember. What you just described is something that I also try to share with my own students, but in a different sense. Instead of Try asking them to create a specific sound is by first making them aware of the sound that they are currently producing with their instrument. Which, strangely enough, we most of us we have no idea of how we're sounding, and we don't have a clear idea either of how we want to sound. So that's why working and practicing awareness in, in different ways in our practice is so fundamental. For when we are under pressure, which makes it even harder, focus and stay present and stay calm and relaxed.、Absolutely. What I like to ask them is to just play and describe me how how what what's happening emotionally wise or physically or the sound. And it's very difficult to do that while we play. One thing that I do with them to help them have this feedback is recording themselves. Uh, on video, also because they can also see their posture and listen to how they're 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 sounding. And working with this oral and this visual feedback is really helpful and helps them develop this sense of awareness of how they're sounding while they they play. When you work with musicians, do you help them overcome physical tension? Specifically, we were talking a lot about、uh, our breath, breathing, and、uh, become aware of our bodies. But do you have specific exercises to help them overcome physical tension? I have several followers who struggle with face tics, like tension in their face muscles, some of them their necks and their arms when they play. So how how do you navigate that with musicians as a dancer? So, so again,、um, this comes back to a notion of practice. Th there, there are some cues I can give them to be aware that they're maybe tensing their shoulders or sticking their neck out, or you know. But in the moment, they're not going to just be able to fix it unless they have an ongoing physical practice. So, you know, I know that can always sound a bit overwhelming, especially like we're all so busy in our lives, and we want to, and many instrumentalists want to prioritize their their practice, their musical practice. I think it's very important to have a physical practice to to keep strong, to equal, to even out the body as well, to stretch, to create strength and and solidity and rootedness and through the core. And all of these things are only going to make them, you know, stronger musicians.、Um, but yes, there are exercises. You know, I. I encourage a yoga practice for myself. That is something that is really, really useful、um, to create a kind of, you know,、um, dexterity and stretching and all those things that can make us feel、uh, wider, more expansive, and also bring awareness to actual muscular tension and muscular、um, uh, agility. And、um, so I can't say, you know, that there are. I think for everyone, even people who work office jobs, we have a huge amount of neck and shoulder tension from just sitting at computers and sitting. And so there are some very simple like exercises. I'd be happy to guide us through some、um, of just、um, you know holding the neck, the stretching the neck, kind of creating a traction of the neck upward,、mm -hmm. and breathing、I、here、really、and lengthening the spine. We could just you can just grab behind the the base of the neck, reach、mm -hmm. our elbows forward, shoulder blades. Down the back, 
and breathe into the back of the neck. And then very gently, we could drop the chin and just let the weight of the hands sit on the top of the skull and breathe into the back of the neck. These are things we can do before practice as well. Letting just the natural weight of the arms, the shoulders sliding down the back and breathing here. Even just three cycles of breath. And this is a nice way to also bring awareness to the breath at the same time. And then slowly coming back on the inhale and exhaling. And then you can do the same thing bringing one hand to one side of the neck and reaching the opposite arm. So opening these muscles, you know, we can always self-massage. We can massage the side of the neck with the other hand. These are nice things to loosen up the neck and do it on the other side. All these things are things we can do for ourselves. And what's nice is in taking the time to do this, we are bringing awareness to our physical being, which is just very important as physical humans. Something that I notice with my students and in my own practice is that we always have this sense of urgency, that we don't have enough time. We need to practice our repertoire, deadlines and exams coming. And we sacrifice this really important step of warming up our body and our minds before we start our practice. And for years, I ignored my warm-up routine because I was always in a hurry to practice my instrument. But in doing so, I, I also lost the possibility to develop these important skills and awareness skills that take a little practice every day in the long run to really um, be present and show up in, in our daily practice and in our performances. Today before my practice, I always stretch, I do, sometimes I meditate, very similar to the first exercises that you you showed us, you share with us here. And just taking some time to be more aware of our body is part of practice. It's not like we're not wasting time to stretch and do some breathing exercises. This is one of the most important practices parts of my practice. Because if I didn't prepare my, my body to practice, it's not simply about being prone to injury, which also is very dangerous and a very important thing that we definitely want to avoid. But it's not just about that. It's about being present and even your interpretation is going to be affected by, by that, by being more aware of your body, aware of, of your breath the way you listen to the music and the way you express that through your movements. One of the most important parts of your practice is taking the time to prepare your body for that physical action that you're, you're going to perform with your instrument. And I try to, to remind my students because I'm always so impressed by their sense of discipline to their instrument. There's no question that, you know, to be a musician, you are disciplined already. And I, I invite them to apply that same discipline, sense of discipline to the physical practice. And that, that it, it, as you say, it will only feed their musicality. It will feed their sense of presence and their artistry. I believe that. But what about preparation before a public performance? M musically speaking, there are some tips that I recommend for my students right before a performance. But what would be your uh, strategies or your insights and advice that you could share with us that we could do to prepare our body and mind right before going on stage? Like I've said before, this is going to sound repetitive. <laughs> the time to apply this is not just before going on stage the first time, right? So just like any practice, something you want to be thinking about many weeks before in preparation for a show you visualize i'm sure you you've, you have some of these practices you visualize yourself performing it you visualize yourself in a room with people who are not judging you with people who are here for pleasure with people who are here to want to receive the beautiful music you're going to play um i would say that's an important one we all have the voices of our judges in our head somewhere sometimes our own voice is the is the biggest judge it's the loudest judge and those judges are sometimes good little judges they're 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 the ones that remind you you know to get off your butt and go work and do all those good things but we sometimes just want to turn down the volume of some of those judges and we certainly want to turn down the volume when we're on stage so just the idea of you know there's this wonderful image of inviting your judges out of the room say mom dad you're great love you but it's time for you to go or to your teacher 
or, you know, these people, imagine them inviting them right out of the room when you sit down to play. Another thing to think about is as you play, and, and just like you said, when you prepare yourself in your practice, can you imagine taking a few moments to just notice your breath? So that then when you are in performance, you will be able to ask yourself, how am I breathing? What's the nature of my breathing? Maybe I could just let go here in this moment. Finding spaces inside that moment of performance, rather than thinking of it as just this kind of, <clears throat> like, you know, start to finish. Sometimes you leave the stage and you don't even know what you did. Is there a way to be alive on stage, to actually notice and it's such a, if we are performers, we tend to love to perform. So is there a time where you can actually bask in the performing and enjoy it? Yes. So I know I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm already on the stage, but <laughs> so let's come back. So if you find that you're very nervous just before going on, is there a way to remind yourself that you have done everything you can to prepare for this moment? Can you trust that you did all the practicing? You're as ready as you're going to be. This is not when you're going to start working through those passages. You've done the work. Be confident in that. Trust yourself. Trust your teacher. Trust your instrument, you've done it. Now is the time to really enjoy the 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 fruit of your labor. If you're very nervous, the 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 breathing at the very simple breathing exercise that I suggested, the one of equalizing inhale with exhale is a really great one you can do seated just before going on. You could just decide you're going to focus on five in breaths, five out breaths and holding at the end of the out breath, noticing your feet in the very simple. Mm -hmm. And then really, and this is something I, I do as a performer, um, as, a, as a dancer, you don't think of the whole thing you have to do on stage. You don't try to think of the whole piece. You think of the first moment on stage. You think of that first step you're gonna make. And so for many of you, it might be something about dealing with your instrument. It might be pulling your instrument out, it might be walking out on stage, putting your hand on the piano. It might be, there's something about ritualizing that moment, those first few moments on stage, that can be a real source of comfort. It can be a place where you practice your physical awareness. It can be a place where you practice that sense of being. You sense your back body, you sense your front body, you sense where your shoulders are when you put your hand on the piano. You sense where your shoulders are when you pick up your flute. It's a moment to come into awareness. Mm -hmm. And then you can think of your first note. And then we hope you are transported by the beauty of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That would be the ideal, is that you get to really take pleasure in what you're hearing. And I ask this to my students a lot because I'm, I wonder sometimes if they forget why they play music. All the time, I'm sure. <laughs> And I hope it's because there's pleasure in it. And so if there's pleasure, can you give yourself pleasure in what you're in the music you're making? And I'm an improviser. I'm a dance improviser. And part of what we aim for in dance improvisation is to be so fascinated with what you're doing in the moment that you find that you are the most interesting being in that moment. And I, I would encourage you specifically as, mu as musical players or maybe improvisers, can you be fascinated with what you're doing? And can you be delighted with what you're doing? The the process of mastering an instrument is so long and sometimes painful that we get caught up in this process that is very lonely for most of us. I'm a chamber musician and I work with other uh, instruments, but most of my practice is all by myself with my instrument and it can feel a little bit lonely. And when we practice, you know, technique or with our metronome or slow practice, sometimes we just get too distant from the music and enjoying the music and i think when you get out of touch with that in your practice it's very difficult on stage to magically fall in love with with the music that you're doing and enjoying how beautiful it is how precious those melodies those harmonies are right so it's that's why i say it's, i think it's one of the most difficult things to achieve especially on stage because of the very nature of the process of mastering an instrument of breaking everything down into small and analyzing everything. Again, one of the most important things that we need to keep alive is this obsession for music. Um, that's why I always encourage my students and even myself to, for instance, make a playlist of their repertoire. This is so so easy, but just the fact of having a playlist with your favorite interpretations 
just to remember, wow, this is really beautiful and listen to it at all times or attending concerts or even, uh, as you mentioned, visualizing the music before going on stage and remembering the character, the emotion that you want to pass on to your audience. Because again, if you don't feel that in the first place, your audience isn't going to feel that either, right? We need to be the first ones to be touched by, by, by the music we are, we are playing. And this reminds me of a conversation that I had with my teacher last week. He said something so beautiful. Uh, I, I presented uh, a Brahms sonata for cello and piano with a friend of mine. And we weren't having fun. We were, we were just playing the notes <laughs> because we were so worried about, you know, playing the right notes and the right sound technique, but it was very, you know, rational and analytic. And he said something so beautiful. He said that we want to get to the end of the, the song, but the purpose, the goal isn't to finish the song. You have to enjoy all what all that happens between first note and the very last one, taking the time to savor every single note. And that's why I say that even these very simple exercises like stretches and breathing exercises can even influence our musicality and our expressivity. It goes really much Farther than simply preventing physical injuries and tension, it's really at the core of, of making music is enjoying what you're doing. And in order to enjoy that, you need to be aware and present and actually listen to what you're doing, the sound that you're creating. I really like though this comment that you made um, that in your own routine before going on stage, you don't think of the whole thing. You think of the very first step this is amazing. I never thought of that. And I'm definitely going to add that to my uh, preparation routine before a performance because it's really overwhelming when you think of all of the pieces that you have to prepare and all the details that you have to think about and you're already stressed because there are people watching. <laughs> so it's really good to just focus on the first moment. Like, how am I going to sit down? I'm going to find my position on my piano or hold my instrument. Because I was just going to say, um, if you can just be in the, the first moment and then the next moment and then the next moment, you will be in a kind of a discovery mode. You will be discovering the music as the audience discovers it. But meanwhile, you know you've practiced. So your body has a memory. You have all that wonderful practice in you, but you could be in the delight of discovering it at the same time as your audience. And I think that that keeps things fresh. Just like you said, your teacher told you, it's not about finishing the thing. It's about being inside it because otherwise we're always just running after the thing and then you never feel on top of it. Whereas can you be inside your experience? And this is what I'm inviting everybody to to invite into their lives is this notion of being inside your physical experience in anything you do. If it's in your gym practice and you, your yoga practice, if it's just taking a walk on the mountain, be inside it, be bring awareness to what you're doing. And this will be a wonderful practice for your music practice. A really important concept of this book, I'm repeating myself once more, but from this book that I mentioned, The Inner Game of Tennis, that is the idea of trust. So when you see that when we're on stage, it's not the time to worry about what we've practiced, but to actually, you know, let it go <laughs> and just enjoy what we're doing. Timothy Gowie also talks about this topic uh, when he talks about trust. You need to trust your instinct and your, your physical self that he calls the self two. Self one is the rational side, is the actually enjoying what you're doing. And self two is our body, our muscle, and everything that we've trained and that we've We've worked in our practice for months and, and years. And it's very difficult to take that step on stage. It's, it's really challenging to just, okay, let's try not to control myself too and just trust it so I can fully be present and aware and enjoy this music, this beautiful instrument, the audience that is here sharing this amazing masterpiece with me and this beautiful concert hall. But it's very difficult. It's much easier said than done. But this is why it's important to 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 just to practice it, to even think about it, to 
not to wait until it's too late or to wait till the last minute. Practice this every day. For me, uh, the most important thing that I take from our conversation today, just to sum up a little bit, everything that we've discussed is that it's way beyond learning the notes. It's about being present and presence in order to enjoy what you're doing on stage is something that we need to practice in our daily practice with our instrument. It's not only going to improve the quality of our daily practice, but it's also going to improve our posture and our musicality, our interpretation, our focus during performances. Everything is going to improve thanks to that daily practice. The 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 coming into physical awareness, everybody you can find your own way of doing that. It does it's not one thing. For some people it might be going to the gym, for another it could be swimming, another person yoga, some people just walking or running or anything in anything that you're doing physically if you could just bring awareness to it. And I do suggest for musicians it's important to build a certain kind of core strength to hold your instrument and to support it and to avoid injury and all of that stuff. And as I say it's not going to be once you're injured that you're going to be able to I mean very often some people wait till they're injured to do physiotherapy or whatever but really to prevent that and you, and most of the musicians I'm working with are quite young they're still in their 20s it's a really great time to start setting up good good practices and um find what works for you find what's enjoyable and make it regular it doesn't have to be every day but you know three to four times a week to do something physical is very important and um I just urge you to find what works for you Sarah thank Thank you so much again for this amazing conversation. I learned so many important and valuable exercises and techniques from you. Thank you very much. And I hope to talk to you soon again. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. It's been really fun.